Hey friends, welcome back to my channel and today's video. I am sharing some rustic country pumpkins. I'm also going to share how I made the cute rustic bow as well as tips for making the wreath. Now guys, I love to share crafty ideas with a bit of rustic country charm on my channel and today's project is no exception. So let's go ahead and get started and let me share how I created these cutie patooties. I'm starting with one of these pumpkin wood cutouts from the Dollar Tree. I took off the string and then I'm going to give it two coats of this Americana acrylic paint in the color Espresso. To add my polka dots, I have this set of uh, foam brushes that I picked up from Michaels and it has uh, different sizes of foam brushes in it. I'm using the one inch foam circle brush as well as some spiced pumpkin acrylic paint and uh, just dipping that in, I load up my sponge brush very, you know, where it's you know, quite a bit in there. And how I do my polka dots is I start in the middle of my project and then I work from there. Uh, I usually do like a one, two, and then I space them out accordingly. And, you know, that way, if I start in the middle, I feel that my polka dots uh, are more even. To add a bit of more uh, pizzazz, I'm just taking the end of a paintbrush, dipping it in that same orange spice pumpkin paint, and just doing three dots throughout the whole pumpkin. For this pumpkin, I'm using one of these from the Dollar Tree that come on a stand. I removed everything off of the pumpkin uh, and just took my sanding sponge and got off any of the excess glitter or anything like that. Now I'm taking my um, needle nose um, fine tip Sure Bonder glue gun and just a hot gluing some just some bulk or some dimension or some ribs of the pumpkins I've done this on other projects and I really like the way that it turned out uh, once I put the scrapbook paper on there this uh, white board scrapbook paper came from Hobby Lobby and so I just cut that out and then I'm going to adhere it once the hot glue is dry then I adhere it with some Mod Podge and I take my time and I just take my squeegee and just, you know, uh, make sure that my Mod Podge is, uh, you know, really covering and I just go around and just, you know, with my foam brush and just put some Mod Podge and just take that squeegee and just form it around the ribs of the pumpkin. The smallest pumpkin in this trio, I'm using one of these pumpkins off of the garland that had the footballs on it uh, from Dollar Tree. I just took off the paper and what helped me is just taking a wet wipe and laying it over there uh, on top of the pumpkin so that the paper would peel off easier. Uh, the paper I'm using is from this paper stack from Hobby Lobby. It's a lot of checks and gingham and, you know, just in fun colors and, you know, really speaks to my heart. So I just cut that out of this orange and white uh, scrapbook paper. And then I'm going to do the same thing with, uh, like I did with the other pumpkin, just to make some ribs of the pumpkin. I just took my hot glue gun, uh, the smaller needle nose, uh, sure Bonder hot glue gun that I got from Hobby Lobby works great for projects like this because I can get a very thin line and, you know, thicken it up as I want to, uh, as I work on my projects. And guys, you know me, I can't stop there. I have to add some distressing and dimension to my pumpkins. So I just have my uh, ink pad. My vintage photo is the color. Um, 
You can get this at the craft store or I do have it linked in my Amazon store if you would like to have it shipped to you or get more details. But what I do is I just have a finger dauber. It just fits uh, on my finger and uh, it just helps with, uh, you know, putting ink on your projects like this. And I just go around to add some dimension as well as some puffy paint. I have the colors orange and I have brown. The orange I'm gonna use for the smallest pumpkin and this just enhances the ribs of the pumpkins. This is just something that I like to do because you know I just like to do all the extras and I am so grateful that the Lord has sent so many sweet friends to my channel that love this type, these type of projects as well. I am so grateful for you that are watching this. All right. So I did the orange and then now I'm doing the brown and I just go around the uh, pumpkin just to add dimension and just more character and cuteness to my pumpkins. Adding all of these extras to my projects really just kind of uh, makes me happy and it's what I do. Uh, just like splattering my projects and I am so grateful that so many sweet friends love this uh, technique or love this look as well. So guys, this is what I do to splatter my projects. I have some paint and um, a stiff brush, a toothbrush would work as well and I just have a stick, uh, just a craft stick and I just run the stick over the bristles of the stiff brush and uh, like pull the stick toward my body so that the paint goes on the project and I always make sure that I have a placemat or some kind of covering this right here is just brown paper that I got at uh, uh, Hobby Lobby and uh, so that my table or my surface is covered and so I uh, splatter the black paint first then I make sure that my brush is clean that it doesn't have any black paint in it and then I go back and I do the white paint so then um, also I'm going to add some uh, shading around the edge of my uh, pumpkin and I'm just doing that in black and how I shade is I just um, take a half inch flat paintbrush. I dip half of my brush in paint, the other half in clean water, and I blend on a paper towel. I go around my project and just add some shading uh, to the edges of my project. Then to highlight and bring out the dots a bit more, I just have a round brush and I just go around each of the circles, just adding like a comma uh, or just a swipe just to highlight the polka dots. Then to add more because guys, y'all know I love to doodle and add squiggly lines and all of that good stuff because I just add, I just really think uh, the beauty is in the details of the projects, especially my painted projects. So I just have a very loved, very thin liner brush that I just go around and just add some squiggles or some doodles. Then I will add uh, some black Sharpie marker, which is my best friend. I do consider my fine Sharpie marker my best friend. So uh, to enhance my project a bit more, like I said, I do put a take a lot of time and um, do quite a few steps in my projects, but I do feel that uh, this just adds so much more to my painted projects. So I just go around all of the circles as well as the as the the edges and uh, just add some black Sharpie marker for some doodling. Uh, I do that as well on these smaller pumpkins, just going around, just kind of hitting the high parts. I don't care if my lines are perfect. They don't, I'm not trying to be perfect. I just want them just to uh, just kind of have, just add a bit of the black color just to give it some doodling and just bring it out. We have to make a cute rustic bow for these pumpkins. So I'm using this uh, burlap from the Dollar Tree. Now for the larger pumpkin, I'm using the orange and I'm just taking my scissors and just cutting it down um, 
you know, a bit more so that I could handle it a little better. And so then I just use my glue gun and just uh, my um, masking tool to help because uh, since the burlap has holes in it, I don't want to burn my fingers. So I use that masking tool that I picked up from the Dollar Tree in the makeup section. That works great. And so then I just wrap the stem of the pumpkin with this orange burlap. I just did the same thing with the medium sized pumpkin, but I used the dark brown uh, burlap from the Dollar Tree. Um, I didn't show that on, you know, on video, but that's what I did. So then now for the smaller pumpkin, I'm just using the natural color burlap and I cut that burlap into three pieces so that I could work with it a bit, a uh, bit better. And so here you can kind of see all three of the pumpkins. I use the darker brown on the medium, the orange on the large one and the natural on the smaller pumpkin. We have to make a cute rustic bow for these pumpkins. So this is one I've already done. I'm gonna share how I did it. I just used a bunch of different uh, burlap and strips of muslin. I have some pit berries. I also have some trim. I am using one of the paper colored, uh, uh, paper covered wires that I got uh, on sale from Walmart a few years ago, but I have since found uh, that they offer them over at Joe Joann's in the crafts section or the floral section over at Joann's craft store. So if you have one new year, maybe you can find some of these. Okay, so what I have here is I just have different, you know, laces. I cut some burlap. I cut some trim. My trims I get from the Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby or Walmart. And so I'm just kind of layering them up. The pit berries came from Hobby Lobby. And so I am just layering them on kind of like a swag uh, and uh, to give it a bit of whimsiness, rustic whimsiness, if that's even, you know, a word, I'm just using some sisal twine and I just did uh, six loops, three on each side. And I just made a separate bow with the sisal twine and then that is going to be what's in the middle of my bow. I layer all of that on top and I just secure everything with a pipe cleaner. I want to make sure that this bow is real secure on this pumpkin. And what I'm using is my crocodile and I'm using the smaller hole. And uh, I just punched a hole in the pumpkin and then I threaded uh, the rest of the pipe cleaner through the back and then I secure it uh, with some glue just to make sure that it's tight on as well as glued on my pumpkin. Okay so this is how they these two look. I just love all the rusticness and uh, so here I'm going to share another where how I made the larger bow uh, because I do get lots of questions uh, or lots of comments to say you know um, how do you make your rustic bows. So this video is sharing how I made the same bow, but um, maybe you can pick up different uh, tips from, you know, just watching it again. I have the um, wire that, you know, the paper covered wire, I'm using all of the same, you know, things, the same trim, the same pit berries and everything. And so here I'm showing um, how I made the larger one. I just have the pit berries. I, you know, uh, turn them, you know, so that they, some pit berries would be coming out of both sides. And I'm just layering up everything. I have the muslin fabric. It's just fabric that I got at the craft store. I just cut like, uh, or just tore off, uh, like 
one inch strips. And then I just have strips of that same burlap that I use to cover the stems of the pumpkins and uh, just strips of that and just doing an X pattern. I have all of these different laces, lace trims that I got from either Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Dollar Tree, anywhere that you can get these thin laces, uh, these lace trims from. And then I, you know, am doing the same thing uh, with my sisal twine. I just make a, a six loop bow, three loops on each side. And then I uh, secure it with a piece of the little sisal twine so that everything is nice and secure and uh, that it doesn't come unlooped or, un, uh, you know, un together. And uh, so then I just layer everything together and secure it with a pipe cleaner. To attach the pumpkins together, I'm using this Fabri-Tac glue as well as some hot glue just to attach everything together. And for the small little sign, I'm using one of the Happy Fall uh, that came out of this pack from Hobby Lobby. It's already painted orange, which is perfect. And so I just attach that to the sign as well with some of that Fabri-Tac and some hot glue. The Fabri-Tac uh, glue is the permanent hold and the hot glue is the instant hold and um, what I did uh, is I do like to give my painted projects a sealer I like a glossy finish so I use this sealer it is my favorite and uh, I just you know brushed it over my projects just to give everything you know so everything is nice and finished here's a quick overview of how I made the wreath I have a 14 inch gold frame from Dollar Tree as well as two 10 inch mesh my rotary cutter and some pipe cleaners so what I do is I just roll these out together uh, I measure out 12 inches and then I just cut them um, all at the same time each wreath maker does theirs a little different but this is just what works for me and I am cutting 20 bundles of these two 10 inch mesh and these 10 inch mesh came from Hobby Lobby. Now to make my uh, cruffles or my ruffles, I just uh, take it and bend it over two times. I clamp it. Those little clamps came from the Dollar Tree. I gather it in the middle to make the ruffle. I clamp it. I do the other one the same way and just uh, fold it over two times. I clamp it and then um, fold the other side. And then I'm going to stack them together. I make an X pattern and just, um, I like to like get all of my ruffles, you know, done. And then I uh, use those clamps from the Dollar Tree that I get from the laundry section. They open very wide and it just helps me uh, with my wreath making for these, you know, little things like this. And so then I just take, take a pipe cleaner and then I just thread it on, on. And I usually start in the outer, I mean, in the inner ring, I start in the inner ring and then I move to the outer ring and I am going to put 20 of these bundles on this frame. Thank you. 
Next layer, I am using this 10 inch mesh as well. I consider this specialty mesh. It's not quite, it doesn't quite have as much on the roll. Uh, but what I do is I just roll it out and I'm measuring out 15 inches and uh, cut those out. And that is what I'm going to attach on top of the layers just to give a bit of this orange and white color. I do this layer the same way, but I'm rolling it over three different times uh, since this is a 15 inch uh, mesh, you know, the length of it. And so I just clamp those together and I like to have like the curls or the ruffles uh, in this, you know, what this specialty mesh, th that's just what I call it. Um, that's the color that it gives. And then I just sporadically, well, I'm going around and I'm just putting, layering this in on top of you know the mesh that I already have there and then I'm going to go around and include this in the entire wreath so I put a total of seven of these orange and white cruffles end to the wreath. So depending on how much stuff you put on it depends on how big or how full your wreath is. Okay, these are the ribbons that I'm using. Um, the pumpkins and the brown and white polka dot came from Craft Outlet. The orange with the uh, burlap check came from Hobby Lobby. I measured them out at 13 inches and I dovetailed all of my ribbons. I almost always dovetail my ribbons. And so to make my bundles, um, I made 20 bundles and I use my tiny attacher, my little stapler. You may hear me mention that in a lot of my projects or a lot of my wreath projects. It just helps with, um, you know, it just makes my wreath making life a little bit easier. It just puts a tiny, tiny little staple in it. And I can, I like, to uh, streamline and I also like to multitask and you know kind of like make things a little bit easier for me anyway my the tiny attacher is in my Amazon store it, or you can buy it at any craft store in the scrapbooking section I also added some pit berries that I get from uh, Hobby Lobby from the fall section, as well as some raffia. I included that in the ribbon bundles. The raffia is from Walmart. Uh, now, I know I don't show here, but I made 20 of the ribbon bundles and I just attached them into each of the pipe cleaners. Uh, I do have other videos that I share, uh, you know, how I attach my ribbon and that kind of thing if you would like to check it out. So then when I'm showing here is how I put the a cable tie mounts on to my sign. I use a combination of uh, E6000 as well as hot glue. They are sticky, um, but I don't trust that. So I want to give it extra security and protection. The cable tie cable tie mounts you can use wire or pipe cleaners like I'm using here and that can help with uh, signs to attach to your wreath and I just thread pipe cleaners on and uh, then I attach it to the wire frame so that my sign is secure. I cover the back of my wreaths with these uh, placemats that I get from Hobby Lobby. It's just a personal preference just to kind of cover up any of the back and just make everything very nice. All right, guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this rustic, happy harvest, happy fall um, wreath. I, I Like I said earlier, I do have tons of other wreath video tutorials on my channel. One of the um, Main things that I like to do is make my own signs for my wreaths. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. We will talk to you all very soon. God bless.